Well, it's that special time when we do wrist check. And as usual, I will go first. I'm actually super pleased that you chose that watch. I chose it because it looked like it fit me. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's one of these ones. It's it's a beautiful, it's got a beautiful twisted lug case. And this one, it just looked like junk. It was, we got it in some watch lot. And I just, I kept looking at it. And eventually I had time and I restored it. It's got a beautiful ETA movement in it. I think it's a 2472. But it runs beautifully. It's just too small for me, but I love the look of it. And I am wearing... I am wearing a 6105-8119, and this is my special one. This is a stealth build. It's got a 6139 movement in it that I up-jeweled, fully jeweled, uh, and with added a hacking lever. It's super accurate. Um, I, I'm super proud of it. It's keeping time to within a few seconds a day. Uh, it keeps very decent time even compared to my Rolex. So, happy about that. Oh! Valentine's Day. I'm pink. I've gotten away for 14 years. She always has claimed from back before we were married that she didn't like Valentine's Day and said it was a corporate holiday and didn't care. So I've been off the hook for 14 years. <laughs> and uh, and she, uh, apparently I was supposed to change that this year. But well, I, we were supposed to do something for the video and I reminded him two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I just, you know, I have it stuck in my head that you just don't... It's but it not, was supposed to be like a thing. And see, we don't pre-plan stuff. <laughs> absolutely it not. It just happens as it happens. It does. Well, honey, we're coming up on 14 years of marriage. I know. I love you very much. I love you too. <laughs> Sorry, he was being silly before he hit <laughs> start. Anyway, so that's why I cleaned the cat box. <laughs> See, he makes me laugh. <laughs> I try. But anyway, I'm not a pink person, but I decided to wear I think well, it works but, great with your blonde highlights. And look. Oh, our, somebody gave us another recommendation for t-shirts. We really have to one. No, I don't want to. It made, it made me nervous. Oh, because you, well, no, we have to basically just, we have to prepay and order a bunch of them and get them here. Like I was also looking at custom watch carriers, like watch rolls that maybe we can start including them because we don't have any swag with our orders when we send them out. We have business cards. <laughs> we don't have any swag. No, we're not cool. No, I mean, you look at Raven watches. I mean, their, their watches, when he sends his stuff out, he's got that beautiful travel box and with the little things and the stuff inside. And what, Bubble wrap is fancy. I guess. We use quality <laughs> bubble wrap. Unless we use recycled bubble wrap. But we only use quality recycled bubble wrap. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, today we got a long day. We got seven pages. Yay. I'm hungry. You are? Yeah. I told you you should go eat a snack. But I just want to do this and But it's an hour. I don't know. It's gonna be an hour. Why don't you go get a snack before here? Give me this. I'll read the first questions. No, it's fine. I can get you a chewy bar. You ate them all. No, there's another box over there. I don't want to eat on a video. That's well, weird. Whatever. I don't want my yogurt. Then go get it. I'm reading. <laughs> Sorry. Question for the next Friday Q&A. Do you want to check out a 6810 and or a 66660 movement? If so, I can send them over for you to do some yesterday watch review today videos. Just let me know. Also, next Friday, Valentine's Day, will be the two-year anniversary of the Sandwich Time channel, and I am likely to miss my goal of a thousand followers on Instagram. Little help? Hey, people, we've been telling you forever to follow the Sandwich Time channel on Instagram. The Sandwich Time channel on Instagram. Sadly, it's not all sandwich content anymore now it's 50 50 sandwiches and watches <laughs> i uh, think that watch people would prefer the the watches and the sandwiches there should be the sandwich channel and the sandwich time sandwich we channel. had sandwiches today we did we did have sandwiches i'd have another one i like sandwiches <laughs> i know uh but anyway the sandwich time channel go on instagram and give him a click okay next one from shane o'laughlin Great video as always. Interesting to hear your thoughts on Discovery and Picard. Really hoping Sela is revealed to be behind everything going on with the Romulans and Dodge and Soji. It makes sense because Data banged Sela's mom back in the day. I don't think Data can make real babies. 
You never know. <laughs> I mean, you did have an encounter with the Borg Queen. I mean, they use nanobots. Anything's possible. Um, I don't know, man. I like Sela. I have always liked Sela. I like that actress. I like Tasha Yar. What? She hates Tasha Yar. I knew you liked Sela. I didn't know you liked Yar. Ew. What? They both have short blonde hair. I yelled at him the other day that his type is is skinny with short blonde hair. Uh, it used to be when I was a teenager. That stopped a long, long time I'm not ago. his type. That's not true. That stopped it when I left high school. Whatever. Then why did you just say it? Because it occurred to me. I was thinking that she has... Because you keep bringing it up. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, I, I thought the Sela arc was good, but I don't like Yar. So I don't want her back because I, I don't like Yar. At all. I don't know what's going to go when on. I, okay, so I've been watching TNG since it came out because my father watched it. And TNG being the next generation for people that don't watch Star Trek, which, whatever. Um, but anyway, I remember being little and being asked what my favorite episode was. And I said, the one when the lady got eaten by the, the mud monster. Yep. <laughs> I used to remember the name of that episode. I don't anymore. I don't remember. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, from Quincy Chang, not watch related. I grew up in the 80s to 90s SF's North Beach, Spencer, so it's nice to hear you lived there during the old days. As for present day, I'd pick New York City to live. I guess I have a bias against new gentrified SF. Yeah, you know, San Francisco in the old days, that was, it was, I mean, it was getting a lot more expensive, but it's like, when we moved out there, like, me and my bu my buddy and his girlfriend they um they just they were done here and I was done in college and all that crap so and they were like we're gonna move to we're gonna move somewhere and we're, I was like okay I'll come with it. I had no life plan nothing and so we chose um from five different cities and we sort of went that none of us had ever been to and we ended up settling on San Francisco we went there I had I think twelve hundred dollars in cash period that's it no job we had no job no apartment nothing we drove there with our stuff in a single moving van and uh ended up in San Francisco on a Friday evening going over the Bay Bridge and you know we just we got a newspaper and we started calling on apartments and this one guy Bill Hole a uh, uh, blessed memory he's long dead now uh he drove up from way down on the peninsula somewhere at on, on a Friday night to show us this apartment that we could potentially rent he Eric's girlfriend she already had a place Eric and I we were screwed we didn't have anything we think Bill was a super nice guy, and we think he assumed that we were a couple, Eric and myself, escaping from the Midwest, from, you know, from oppression and horror, uh, much like he and many people that he knew would have done back in, like, the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. Well, Colorado was known as the hate state at the time. Yeah, Bill Hole was from, like, Oklahoma or something. Oh, yeah, and Colorado was not a... It was That was tough. Matthew Shepard was years away, but it was coming. Um, but anyway, uh, what was I going to say? But actually, so Bill was, like, um, he was a nice old guy. And he was like, you know, you guys are... He listened to our story and what was going on. And he said, well, why don't you guys... You just give me the... Give me the first month's rent and don't worry about the deposit last month's rent or any of that stuff. You guys find jobs and uh, figure it out and we'll we'll come back around and we'll get we'll get you make make sure that you're all set. It was very touching. He was very, very nice to us. But San Francisco in those days was especially even in that area was, it was a little dicey, a little rough. I remember it though. Boy, it was pretty. It was lovely. First time I ever saw fog coming in through the Golden Gate Park. With the fog rolling in, it was just, it was like living on an alien planet. Not like that anymore. Well, I'm sure the fog's still there. <gasps> oh my goodness! It's cracking! Yes, yeah, cracking. I'm going to come and get you. Oh no, now you guys are stuck looking at me and I don't know what to talk about. Uh, we lived in San Francisco for a little bit in 2011, but it was really as anybody knows stupid expensive so we couldn't afford to stay there i think we were there for like five months before we came back to colorado um i don't know now well, he has a cat <laughs> oh she's got little wet feet hi 
Anyway, yeah, San Francisco in those days. Oh, uh, by the way, our rent per month was, I think it was $800 a month. Two bedroom. No, it's like a, it was a big one bedroom on Fell and it was right next to Divisadero. Okay. From Rob G, or G, I don't know. I have this exact same watch, and I can't find any info about it anywhere. Oh, it's a, it's a midsize uh, 7546603A. So it's one of these midsize divers. They were, um, I have a bag of them. Should I go get the bag? Are you going to leave me here again? Yeah, why not? You're prettier than I am. Oh, thank you. But Kraken's the prettiest. She is the pretty and the wettest. <laughs> it, it's still snowy outside here. And, and it's going to snow again. And it's going to snow on Monday. It's, there's been snow since October. It sucks. Okay. These are all unrestored. But they were mid-sized diver in the 80s. Instead of being like the big full-size 7548 7000s or anything else like that, 7546. So they had a Pepsi one with a blue thing usual deal or they had um this black one yes i know the hand has fallen out of it like that one they're really cool they're cool they're a great size um and Seiko went all out with them like they have solid stainless bracelets really nice quality bracelets you can see some ads for them if you google them there was a newspaper or a magazine ad and it showed these watches on imposed over like somebody like surfing a big wave or something and they were supposed to be sports watches they're they're nice they're nice watches they're very well made and they've got this cool coin edge bezel but the quality of the of the bracelet is really i mean because in this era seiko made everything almost everything folded link to make it solid stainless they were they were swinging for the fences i should restore this black one it's such a nice watch oh well anyway what Huh. Smackies. From Sam B. Stop sniffing me. It's wet. <laughs> it seems that overall the watches made by Sua tend to be much more popular with collectors, but based on your observations, the one from Diney seemed to be better built. At least the movement seems to be. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, in some cases, I absolutely believe that's true. Um, you know, 6,000 series watches, 6105, 6309, that kind of stuff. They're good movements. Like this one, I fully rebuilt it, but I upgraded the heck out of it. And as a result, it's very, very accurate. Um, but stock, I mean, Sicko cut some corners. Um, whereas the, the, the Dany movements weren't really like that. They tended to last a little longer. They seemed to give better numbers. Um... There's probably a reason why the Dainey, you know, 7 I Series... Dainey. Dainey, Dainey, was chosen to power the, the next-gen, you know, mainline divers rather than another, the Sua 6000 Series. But, I don't know, it's Sua's aesthetics. Those are the ones that lasted. Everything now that Seiko puts out is looks like Sua, and all the Grand Seiko is built in the Sua plant. So Sua lives. What? She's so loud. Well, she was stuck outside. It's terrifying. It's terrifying? She's a cat. <laughs> From Chrono Craze. Have you watched Ford versus Ferrari? It's a great movie, and I think you'd like it. I enjoy watch spotting in movies, and the two main characters, Matt Damon and Christian Bale, play a sports hoyer, Otavia? Otavia? Otavia and Carrera, respectively. Uh, what do you think of those vintage Hoyer chronographs in general? They're beautiful. Hoyer made a really nice product. We didn't, haven't watched the movie because we don't really watch movies. We, we don't. Also, the whole thing with like the two guys in the beginning, like getting into a fist fight on the lawn and like somebody's wife coming out and snapping over a chair so she can watch it happen. I was like, come on. Yeah, it, but isn't it a true story? Ever, for a given value of true. I wouldn't mind watching it. That people, it's got great reviews. Didn't it get nominated for stuff? I think. It well, did. how would I know? I don't know. I don't know. We watch TV shows. We don't really watch movies, and I don't know what these watches looked like. So I suck. They're they're. You would look at them and you'd be like, okay, they're they're big Swiss chronographs, lots of colors, racing chronographs, pretty chunky cases. Don't you remember the guy was trying to trade us one? Oh yeah. For the for the root beer, and you looked at it and you were like, I don't like that. 
for high cracking. Or uh, Lucky Gold Panda. That sold that is really cool. I wasn't aware of it. I had my eye on the Yema Speed Graph, which has the NE86. Thanks for the mail call, Friday Entertainment, and have a great weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, I need to look at the Yema Speed Graph. Also, oh. Tom, I did get your email. I, I use, I have two computers. I have one for upstairs and another one for work. So I have an email being composed to you about your proposition and I just I haven't sent it yet so Tom I'm gonna get back to you about that and sure I think that's fine I, I don't see why not I think that's great a feckery thank you for the reply the horology house story is just bonkers couldn't understand why the buyer would be patient for two and a half months until the watch uh, until he got the watch when he was originally promised a week I wouldn't be able to manage being um, that patient for a Seiko, let alone a Rolex. That is, I agree with, and it's something that I was marveling at that he waited that long after spending that much money. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, a follow-up question on the 7018 7000 crystal. Is it easy to remove a bonded crystal from a metal ring? So an article about separating them through an ultrasonic bath. Is there any other way? And would the 300V04 or the 300V16 crystals once removed from the metal rings be a good fit if I couldn't find a 300V11. And speaking of end links, and the video leads me to another question. Do you want to answer that one? Let me ask, let me answer that other one first. Uh, the way that you do it, uh, the way that I've had success in the past is you take that bonded metal ring, right? And you put it upside down so the crystal is hanging down below the ring and you put it on like a something metal or, or or porcelain or something that can deal with heat and you have it so that it's resting on the ring the glass is unsupported then you put it in like a toaster oven or a regular oven or whatever run it up to like 350 and just let it sit there and eventually the glass will come out uh the stuff they use to bond it is really really hardcore like acetone won't touch it so heat is what really seems to work um so that's what i would recommend wasn't there a first question there was one about the metal ring. Did you just answer that? I did. And then... Would a good fit if I couldn't find a... Would oh, I don't know about maybe it's... But if you if you can go to like... You go to Jules Burrell or something else like this. They sell generic crystals of different thicknesses and different widths. You get the right crystal with the bevel and it's the right outside thing. Yeah, it's going to be fine. You just, you can even call them up and be like, hey, you, you get the old crystal out and get a micrometer on it. Say, hey, I need a crystal that's 30 millimeters across and 2 millimeters thick or 1.5 millimeters thick with a beveled edge. And they should potentially have something like that. Hi. I have a 7016 blue yellow Monaco, but can't seem to find end links that fit it. Any idea what end links would be suitable? I got a pair of 6105, 8110 end links, but those bulge out of the case. I don't know. End links are a whole, <laughs> what? End links are a whole different like set of, it's really tough. I have a ton of end links and like Seiko, they seem to like religiously change their end links for what? For the cat butt pointing at the camera. <laughs> Seiko and links are just are just they're 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 it's very, very rare to have one end link for one model work for another watch. It just it's just sucks. It's just it's just the way that it is. Julie Hill. Oh, horology house. Oof. I've said it before, reputation. It can take years to build trust and only moments to irreparably damage that. Have you seen the film Uncut Gems starring Adam Sandler? A charismatic jeweler and degenerate gambler, a real roller coaster of a story. He's always trying to give away fake Rolexes to people he owes money to. Sabrina, your big Lebowski cardigan is just great. The dude abides. The dude does abide. Dude does abide. <laughs> Adam Sandler was in a serious movie? I don't know. Again, we don't watch movies very often. It's certainly not Adam Sandler ones, but thank you for the recommendation. What's up? I'm trying to get to the next page. It's fighting me. Uh, okay. You guys asked really long questions this week. <laughs> Life through quality binoculars. 
I saw your video and remembered we had a watch exactly like this somewhere in the study. Uh, he's talking about a 6105-8110. I dug it out and it is in brilliant condition for its age. The strap had broken back then and the watch was placed in a drawer for the better part of 40 years. The bezel and body are in top shape with very slight usage marks as well as the dial and loom no discoloration. In fact, the loom looks to be in great condition, but it is not as bright as modern watches. I'm thinking maybe it's just lost most of its shine over time. The crystal has very slight fogging on the underside like yours in the video, maybe slightly less fogging on mine, but it's definitely there, and a few cracks scratches on the top side of the crystal from wearability. However, there seems to be no water leakage anywhere. I look closely and the hands and dial look excellent. There is only one slight mark on the bezel itself and the body has a few fine marks, but really superb condition for a 50 year old watch. It's a lovely piece. It has never been opened or serviced in the last 50 years. I say 6105, it says 6105, 8110 on the case back, exactly like yours on the video, but in really clean shape. Should I get it serviced? It seems to be running around three or four seconds per day sitting flat on the desk. I can't wear it as I do not have a strap for it. Alternatively, should I look at maybe selling it? What are your thoughts? Nonetheless, thank you for your informative video. Kind regards, Peter. Hi, Peter. What you're describing is like an investment grade watch. Um, I want to go check on Sebastian. Okay, that's fine. What you're describing is an investment grade watch. The 6105s are very, very collectible. Um, and a huge piece of their value is built into the loom. So like this watch, that's entirely original loom. That's completely original Seiko loom. And that that's kind of a rare thing to see because in order to keep these waterproof, you would have to upgrade them or not upgrade them. You back in the day, you would have, when they were serviced, you would need to have the crown replaced because the, the seals, the gaskets were permanently inside of them. A lot of people didn't do that. And so the, the, the gaskets in these things were made of Buna N, uh, Buna 70. And it is, they chose, that was chosen because it had a wide range of temperature that it would continue to be elastic at. Problem is, is it oxidizes and they get really hard. And then they just, they turn into plastic and then water would get in and it would, you'd get condensation in there and Seiko Loom reacts very badly to moisture of any kind. And so what you're describing is an investment grade watch that's really nice. Um, I guess the question is, do you want to wear it? If you just want a payday, leave the watch alone. Don't do anything to it. Just leave it exactly as it is. The collectors will want to buy it just like it is. Because if they're going to do anything to it, they want to do it. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you. You can, If you want, send me an email with pictures. Uh, I could potentially move it for you if you don't feel like dealing with it. Um, I don't know. So anyway, send me an email to uh, kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair.com. That's kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair.com. And send me just a couple basic informative pictures and we can talk more. This one has lots of numbers in it. <laughs> oh, oh, huh? Oh, he's talking about the, his, his... Um, I can read it. I want to try I should have gotten one when I was upstairs. I told you. No, you didn't. You I didn't. I told you to get a snack. Um, it's from Rick about my Seiko Service 6R15D. Yes, it runs clean and straight. I just now put it on the time grapher, and of course, it's going to make a liar out of me. It's running in the 270s, but I wonder if that's because it's been stopped cold for a week. Best numbers are dialed down. It gets a little wonky in other positions down to the 240s. Max speed error is 0.02. Rate varies from negative 7 to plus 3. Um... Wrist accuracy is superb. As far as I can tell from the tech manual, the only difference between C and D 6 or 15 cases um, is, oh, is Seiko started trend is the location of the mounting holes for the metal spacer. Seiko started transitioning the 6 or 15 cases about a decade ago to locate the two mounting holes a little further apart, I guess for better stability. The C movement has mounting holes for both the old and the new case, while the D movement can only be mounted in the new case. My particular model, Sarb 033, I have one, I'll dig it out. 
comes in two different case numbers as a result. 6R1500C0 for the old case, A through C movements, and 6R1500C1 for the new case, C and D movements. All the part numbers for the various components are the same. The only parts that are different are the main plate and the winding rotor. And then he has a link in for Seiko Service USA data sheets on the 6R15C and D. Um, and then he goes off on another thing. The horology house thing is really disappointing. I was a subscriber because his B-roll photography was incredible. Such a waste. And yeah, I was raised Yankee too, so I can relate. Well, I, yeah, well you know, Yankees. <laughs> you know, but the whole, yeah, horology house, yeah, total waste. For what? But you, we still don't know what's going I don't, I've stopped researching it, but I'm assuming maybe somebody will say something. What? <laughs> Turn the thing. <laughs> Stupid cat. Okay, from Tochiro, you are not nothing. You are more niche and fun to watch than horology house. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad somebody enjoys it. Yeah. Got a text message. Well, thank you very much. No, we're. we're Are you freaking kidding me? What more? What? I got a text message from Bloomberg's campaign. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's because our our primary is coming up. Yes. Uh. From. What are you doing? <laughs> Michael Sands, great video. I learned a lot. The blue dial 6139 is spectacular. I think I'm coming around to agreeing with you on the beauty of these over the gold dial version. Someday I'll find one and tackle it as a project, but I'm a long way from having the skills and experience to work on chronograph movements of any value. I like that people work on watches. It makes me happy. Yeah, you know, especially considering in our in our throw everything away culture. You know that we're that we that people are, are learning to do this stuff. It's a great skill. And, and you know the nice and we lost two full generations of watch repair people. I mean, and now everybody and their dog needs their watches repaired. And so there's all these new people that are getting into it, which is which is great. You know, and it's it's nice to be also self sufficient, and then you can do the work to your level of expectation. And if you screw up, well, you're not far from the person who did the job, so you can give them a piece of your mind. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I love the blue dials, by the way. I really do prefer them to the gold. It's just my thing. I don't know. I don't like blue. Well, they're like blue-black. I know like, what they look like. It's the same color that they paint navy blue in World War II. They painted Corsairs. That really blue-black. Oh, sh here, I'm sorry. Crack in. There you go. She wanted to settle down in the wing chair here, which is where she sleeps during the day. But there was crap in the way. From Rob, many months ago when I found your channel without even looking and watch it each week for the enjoyment it brings me. I've never understood all the numbers thrown around. I have a Seiko Samurai that runs 30 seconds fast a day with spec, haha. It's a, a SRBP55K1 and one of the most handsome divers I know. I know it has a 4R35 movement. My question is that I do not understand when people ask questions and you both are saying things like 6105 blah 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 blah. If the movement in my watch is a 4R35, why is everyone using very long different numbers when talking about movements? Well, does he continue on with that question? I think he had a two-parter, didn't he? Well, he just said thanks and uh, when I think of a singer from Colorado, it's not Joe Walsh, Rocky Mountain Way, it's John Denver, Rocky Mountain High. Every time in my life I drove through the Rockies on the way to BC, I would um, never feel as good inside as when I was at high altitude like the summit of the Crows, Crow's Nest Pass in BC or the road up through Glacier National Park in Montana. Hmm. Um, to answer your question... I always think it's so strange that we just don't really, we're not like, oh my God, Colorado. Everybody else is, and we're like, <laughs> I mean, I'm from here, so I remember what it was like in the 70s, which is dusty and kind of gross I just and don't poor. Like, I don't like the climate. I don't mind. It's too dry. Yeah, I don't mind anything else, though. 
No, I know, but I mean, people really love it, and it's look, they're moving snow. Oh, look at that—a giant dump truck full of snow. Wow. Um, on your other question, okay, there's the thing is, is that Seiko has always used model numbers, like what you're talking about—the SPBD00, whatever the heck it is. But in the old days, n nobody knew what those numbers were. There had there were no scans in those days. There were no scans of the um, catalogs that had model numbers. Nobody had an easy way to find out what they were. Even if you knew a model number, if you rattled off a model number, most people would be like, what are you talking about? So they would go off the case back, and the case back does have what yours would have. So if you take that Stargate of yours, it'll say 4R35-whatever-the-heck-it-is. And so I find those things far more useful because um, it tells me the movement and then the case style because that's what they are. But more and more these days, people are actually, they're dealing with, they're using the, the actual model numbers, not the movement casing numbers. Like if I say SNJ025, people know what I'm talking about. SNK809, people know what I'm talking about. Yep, we all do. <coughs> and I don't, of course they do. Everybody does. Yeah, of course. Kraken does. Um, but, you know, uh, like I couldn't, I, I, I wouldn't. I guess 7S26 something, but I don't know what the casing number is. But for big ones like this, you know, it's funny. I do all this work. I have no idea what the model number is for this watch. None. I could look it up because all the catalogs have been scanned. But even if I did know the model number for this watch and I rattled it off, almost no one else would know what that meant at all. So I still use the old system of referring to these, which is 6105-8110 or 8119. Which one is that? Uh, this is an 8119, so 9, so it's North America. All the rest is world. Tom N. Hello, so glad you took a look at the Soldat. The blue colorway, while not quite a Kakume homage, in my opinion, does channel that vibe. On another note, in an earlier MC, you were hesitant to accept a tip because, if I recall... Uh, you felt um, you are just doing your thing. I beg to differ on that. Have you ever given any consideration to starting a Patreon page? Or have you pronounced it? I tried to, and it won't let me connect the... Oh, there was a big email about that. There was... There you, was? Yeah, you got a support email like Where? yesterday. I didn't delete it. You got a support email from I some getting, person. I keep getting junk emails, so I no. thought... That I must have looked at it thinking it was junk. Oh, I couldn't figure out how to put YouTube on it, so I stopped doing it. I just feel like, I don't know, weird asking people for... It, it seems like, you know, it's... I'll do it, but because that's what people do, but I don't know. I It, it just seems like, I don't know, grasping and, and greedy, and what have we done to deserve that? I, I don't, I don't know, again, being a, a Yankee, you don't want to put yourself forward and you want to be restrained and respectful and why would i mean on on under what basis would i ask people for more money i haven't done anything for them you know i if i service a watch or if i sell a part then sure then why not money is going to change hands because you have labor and parts and stuff like that but for people to randomly give me money it just seems i don't know well, it just then what do we have to do seems like, selfish do we have to put out other content and stuff i can think, i don't know i can think we put out a ton of content I know, but we stopped doing the Seiko 101 stuff, and then maybe we could do that on that, and then people have to pay to see it. I haven't done yesterday's watch review today in forever. And then maybe we can do a, ask us a question about anything, and we'll answer it within reason. Anyway, she's working on the Patreon. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, Lester loves watches. Your channel is so much more fun and fact-filled than HH. Regarding the... Contiki 1973, I did a short video on the re-edition a few weeks ago. It's a great watch, solid, quirky, super comfortable. I recommend it, but get it with box and papers in excellent condition. Okay, I looked at it and it looked interesting, but then I got distracted and forgot about it. But I will look at it again. What? That's such a you thing. You know, I'm, I'm nothing if not distractible. <laughs> so it's why I can't work to the clock. I work to the job. From Peter Parker, thanks for all that you two do for the watch community. Recently saw your video on the SKZ327. The Stargate always appealed to me, and I appreciate your insights on the design cues. The bezel dial and handset design are also a callback to the Bright Phoenix SAGQ005 from early 2000s. No, yo, S, what is that? 
S-A-G-Q. S-A-G-Q-005 from the early 2000s. I looked that up. I want to put a couple of pictures of that one in. It's a, it's a super, it is a super cool watch, actually. Absolutely, because I saw the picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can look it up. Drink. What drink? I was expecting like a margarita back there. I wish. <laughs> we have the stuff I can make you one right no, now. No, I don't. What time? Oh, wait, look at my watch. <laughs> I can make you a margarita right now. No, it's not even three. Who cares? Um, anyway. Which featured the 8L35 movement, but you are absolutely right that the hour markers and case shapes being inspired by the 6105 six, and 6159. I think the SKZ case is an improvement from the SAGQ, and the 7S36 is more in the spirit of a tool watch than, it, than the 8L35 dress divers. I have seen photos of the Stargate bezel worn in where the base metal shows through the black paint and the patina looks great. I've managed to find an SKZ327J. I might be willing to part with it if you ever have a fourth child and are looking for another. <laughs> We're not having a fourth child. No. I, I really like that Seiko Brights actually, and I love the fact that it... I Actually, I really like the case because uh, Seiko has those with extra long lugs on either side i think it's actually really cool looking i'm not so 100 percent sure on the handset if that watch had the marine master handset i would be all over it and then it occurred to me i have a new old stock marine master handset if i ended up with one of those seiko brights watches if somebody has one and they don't like it i want to get rid of it i could put a marine master handset on it i wouldn't even need to do anything else i could just straight swap and i think that would be that'd be really nice looking i really do what? I don't remember where I was. Mm. Oh, I think I'm on this one. For Nielsen Gupta, hi SNS, loving your videos. As always, question for the next mail call. What are the worst defects on 6139s that you have come across, and what is your mark on case backs after servicing a watch? Many thanks, Neil. Well, um, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know that. Uh, it changes on my mood. I kind of do them the same sometimes, but. It's not a secret, but it's it's. I, I don't know that anyone would be able to recreate them, but it's it's just my date and some some initials. Uh, but I have other ones that are secret, uh, that are secret, and they're secret because nobody can see them. Um, but I'm I, gonna get to find out once these videos are done. Oh no! Well, I'm I'm just gonna say, but I don't do them all the time. When I restore a special watch, something I'm really happy with. But a watch only for myself, I would never do this to a customer watch, but a watch that is mine and I'm restoring it if it's a good day or something funny is going on or I just feel like it, I will oftentimes, I will put in a secret note basically on the back of the dial. I'll actually put in a little thing, but again, only for watches that are for me. But a lot of those watches, because I'm not a hoarder, have been sold. And so if you have one of my watches out of my collection that I restored for myself, it's possible that there's a special secret note in it. everybody goes and opens up their Don't watches. Don't open your watches. Leave them alone. It doesn't matter. But it, that's the only secret thing I do. The rest of it is very boring. Uh, Larry Watt. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He asked about 6139s. Oh, worst defects. Mm. The problem with the 6139. Sebastian called me. The problem with the 6138 and the 6139 chronographs is that chronograph wheel. Everything is built around it, and if it fails, you're screwed. Um, I, I, and there's no. I've even I've experimented with trying to take those components apart. Like if I could get like, you know, enough of them apart, I would probably be able to assemble one good unit out of like two or three, or get it apart and simply replace the. Um, the, the clutch spring, uh, where they also fail the other way, is that the big fourth wheel gear section of it, it has, a, has a, a, a brass gear that's pressed into a f the flat main gear itself. And those often will come out. And so you, the, the, the part will be fine. The whole wheel will be, the clutch will be good. But the, 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 the flat wheel is flopping around. And if I could get them apart and fix them, then, you know, that would help. If Seiko had designed them to be repaired, not just replaced, 
that would help. Um, but it's the, you know, it's the thing. It's the thing that I always worry about with a 6138. Like I got, I bought this. I just bought this from Sean Paul Lorenzen. Sorry if I got that name wrong. Uh, he's a friend on Instagram. And I just bought this jumbo off of him. And it, I didn't even ask. It didn't occur to me. Well, for what he was asking, I wasn't that concerned. But And plus, the watch looked good enough that I thought it was going to be okay. But this one, you know, thankfully has a good chronograph wheel there. Just pushing it over. But, man, if they're bad, mm. I should have asked. But, you know, whatever. Off it went. What's he doing? He was holding the iPad and was like, what? But he was quiet for a while because he found his apple chips. And he was sitting in his underwear. Eating his apple chips? <laughs> eating his apple letting chips. Letting it all hang out? Well, he was in his underwear. So, no. <laughs> uh, now he's chasing the dog. Larry Y. Spencer just came across YouTube site, site and determined that I have the exact same model of the Seiko 6119 8140. I acquired this watch in the fall of 1968. I was, um, you were a baby. I was. <laughs> I was stationed at the RAF Upper Hayford, England. An airman arrived at our base from Vietnam at a new meter of our RC Con group. One day he knocks on my door and asks if I could loan him $5. He said he would pack the $5 back on payday. Well, two days later, he was arrested for having drugs and taken off base to jail. Never got my money back, but I still, and the was, and it still runs. Oh yeah, that's great that you've got that watch. That's that's a that's a fantastic story. Uh oh. Uh, the way things normally go with the dog is that he gets really wound up, or Sebastian does, and they start running back and forth, and the dog like bowls him over, and then he's crying and crying and crying, and then everything's fine. Um, guy, the guy came from Vietnam to be posted in the UK at an RAF base with a a major role, and he got busted for drugs that sucks i read a thing actually that there was a whole deal with a lot of servicemen they just they would they they would smoke weed or whatever the heck it was and then they started the brass started basically saying hey look man you you can't smoke the weed because we can smell it and then we're going to start cracking down on this and so a lot of people moved to heroin um re i mean the whole thing with vietnam is just sad uh and that's a particularly sad thing so i'm i'm sorry for that guy i'm Glad his watch still exists. I wonder what happened to him. But at least we know where the watch is, right? I'd like to see a picture of that watch. If you have time to send me one, that'd be great. <sighs> Mihai Pascu. Hopefully I got that right. Question for next. On the Seiko 7016 or 7018 movements, would you recommend keeping the chronograph running? Thank you. The there That's the Dyne version of the 6138s. Same thing. Vertical column with a clutch. Um, I haven't really ever seen those. I think I've only seen one of those where the clutch has failed. Unlike Dyne, which is like this sort of nested series of circles that are only connected at two points on the outer side like this, the the Dyne ones is a straight, like a six finger, like, 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 like splayed out six fingers. And that's the, that's the clutch thing. It's a stronger design. Um, I'd be less concerned with that. Um. As long as it's serviced, it probably should be fine. As I, Again, though, as I say, um, my feeling more and more these days is that the important thing is not so much leaving it running or leaving it stopped. It's being very careful when you're transitioning from running to stopped to reset. You just don't want to put a lot of force in that reset. You want to make it really as light as possible. Wait until the sweep is almost at top dead center and then reset it so you have as little force as possible going into that chronograph wheel. Because you just don't want to put big shocks through something like that. Because the only time I've seen a chronograph wheel fail live, I did it to a yachtman. It's because I didn't understand at that point how that those components were delicate. I thought it was like a Swiss chrono, which is has a, a sort of a filter, a filter of force between you clicking the button. Because you click the button in a Swiss chronograph, and what that does is that releases a lever inside, which is propelled by its own spring, and it goes... And it... Everything goes back to zero, whereas Seiko, you click that reset button and all the force of your thumb goes right into the hammer and forces the, the, the hard reset. So if you're really cranking on it or if the spring tension is wrong, you can put a ton of force into the thing, boom, and it's gone. 
Where were you? I don't know. Uh, what, in the basement. Oh, the dog jumped on Sebastian's head. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Sam D. Okay. Can you tell me where you got the end legs for the 6309 diver that would fit in H-Link? I love the look of the H-Link on a turtle. Unfortunately, the one that Uncle Seiko is currently selling is just too beefy and heavy for my taste. Even the finishing uh, and look are fantastic. Um, well, I don't know. Larry's end links should work, but the ones that I have are ones that came to me from Jonathan Koch. Um, when he was alive. And yeah, I was going to say, that was a long time ago. East Tech, it's his. And I, I have another maybe 10 sets, but that's it. There are, there are no more in the world once those are gone, as, as far as I know. Um, I would ask Larry, uh, even those though, Jonathan's, I still have to modify those. I have to take out the width by a half millimeter on each side. L maybe Larry has just the end links and he can mail those to you. Or you can buy just a set and then use whatever bracelet you'd like. I, I, I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case. From Tom N. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. Another question about servicing. One often sees a claim of recent service on used watches up for sale online. Is it possible for a layperson with only a watch back remover and magnifying glass to assess these claims by visual examination with the watch in hand? Also, and sellers sometimes give out time grapher numbers. What should we look for on these numbers for vintage Seikos? You should, you know, honestly, if you're buying a lot of vintage watches, there's no real excuse to not invest in a, a basic time grapher. Um, they're like, now these days, they're like a couple hundred bucks because numbers don't lie. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what the movement looks like, if it's clean or if it's dirty when you look at it, or if even if you see lubrication under the balance capsule, None of that stuff means anything. Everything is the numbers. So if you put it on there, the nice thing is you're not hoping that your own incomplete knowledge is, is going to give you an answer. You just put it on there and there are the numbers. The numbers you want to see on a serviced watch, on a good serviced Seiko, they tend to hover, depending on the model and, the, and that kind of stuff and the strength of the mainspring, in like the 240s up to like the 260s. Like a, I've I, I've been getting some pretty good numbers in the 260s, um, and that if they're serviced correctly, they should do that. Swiss watches are going to be 270 and up, um, and they should be clean and flat. Um, and the nice thing is, is that even just without even thinking about numbers, you look at the time grapher and you look at the readout, and if it's a clean flat line, you know what's going on. If you got two lines then you know you've got some beat error. If it's going up, you know you're gaining. If it's going down, you know you're losing. If it's snow, you know you have a major problem. Time grapher. What? Bored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want me to start reading about the Ichinomaya domain? No. Are you sure? When is it? Uh, when well, was it, it? it was it it was a it was a section it was a when uh, I know what Edo it period so it would be like 15 1600s okay. Japan okay. Um, Adam Leahy uh, hi mate great vid I'm wanting my father's old Seiko restored but I think everything is seized just want to know if it would be worth trying to get restored or not Every single watchmaker or jeweler doesn't want to touch it, has sentimental value, and would appreciate any advice. You need to tell me what it is. Yeah, so you can send me a photograph um, to kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair.com. Send me just a photograph of the watch, the front and the back, and then we can talk more. What? That's my soda. Oh, you're looking for a cat? No, no, I know where she is. Oh, what are yeah. you looking for? Oh, nothing. It doesn't matter. I'm a little parched. Your soda's right here. Oh, it is? I didn't know where it was. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Um, from pre Mystery. Agreed discovery is just way out there fits more with the JJ Trek saga. You just said that the other day when they were going down to a ship and everything was exploding. You were like, this is yeah, a JJ going, Trek. Yeah, they were going, they had their like, their crazy like spinning light pods, which makes no sense at all. And then they're going through this like huge, like, like asteroid field. It's just, it was excessive. Yes. Um, 
from Lane Edwards. That 6309 looks great. Can't wait to wear it. And thanks for the crown video. Looks like a fun job. It is actually, I really enjoy doing the crowns. Um, uh, your stuff is all packed up, Lane. Uh, but I was literally, I was packing it up and the mail pulled up. So it's not going to be today. It'll be tomorrow. But yeah, I looked at that 6309 again that I did for you. And it looks really nice. I'm very proud of the job. Hopefully you'll be happy. Uh, and yes, to answer your question, I'm absolutely delighted with the trade. Um, uh, Sabrina loves that Bulova, uh, and I love working in trade, so that works out great. Uh, from Neil Singupta. Uh, wow, again? Yeah. I got him twice? Yes, well, that's fine. One question he asked twice, so I'll skip that. Uh, hi, SNS, question for our next mail call. Why are the old parts returned to the original owner? Because legally they belong to the original owner. Um, if you, I mean, the same thing is, is true, actually, if you take your car in for service and and they should, if you want, if you ask them to return your parts, they should. But with a watch thing, everything, none of that stuff. And once you buy replacement parts, the old parts and the new parts are yours and they go back to you. But also, I like to do it because it says, I, I just, I want people to be more involved with and aware of what happened with their watch restoration and to be able to look at the things themselves. I like demystifying watch repair. Um, it's not any kind of, you know, secret society knowledge, you know, the guru on top of the mountain. It, it's just, they're just machines. And I don't, I don't, a lot of, you know, serious, you know, watch professionals, they, they sort of, they get real snooty and weird about that stuff. You know, I, I wanted to make it an every man kind of thing or every woman. Thank you. How'd you know what I was thinking? We've been married for almost 14 years. <laughs> Uh, for both of you, what is your favorite current Seiko model and favorite current non-Seiko model? I saw a Grand Seiko I liked, but apparently it didn't exist or something. Oh, no. You liked it when you only saw the computer representation of it, the computer mock-up. When you saw the actual photograph of one, you were like, wait a minute, I don't want that. Because I don't want blue. She wants a Grand Seiko, but she can't decide which one. Uh, what about your favorite non-Seiko? I had that still from when we were at the gym talking about it <sighs> oh she wants the Junghans max bill they're like 800 bucks or something else like that but she, they are really cool they're very clean design favorite seiko favorite seiko i am wearing my 6105 and they are beautiful current Every, current i mean is that a current seiko no, no, gosh. This I is... know it's not. He said current. Oh, he said current Seiko. <laughs> gosh, I don't know. And then the other one is also a current new watch? Yeah, current uh, non-Seiko. Wow, I answered the question before him. It never occurred to me to think about that. A current new watch. Mm. Well, you know, actually, it would be the Omega that she is wearing. No, I'm not. Where well it does wear sometimes. Most of the time. Current new Seiko? I don't know. I need to really. I need to think about it. I need to think about that. That didn't. That didn't occur to me to think about. Because I don't know too much about modern Seiko. I really don't. What? Spencer Braithwaite. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I have a question for next mail call. I mentioned my recently acquired 1978 6309-8120. It's still waiting to be serviced by the seller. I was wondering what your thoughts are on this sort of watch. Obviously, it uses the same movement as the well-known 70 Seiko's dive watches, yes, but in a different style of case, yes. It's interesting to me because the dial seems rather on the dressy side, <clears throat> but it's toned down with matte black markers and somewhat sporty hands. Uh, the case is unadorned with the typical tool watch additions, but it's heavily proportioned with hooded lugs, generous in dimensions for the time, mostly brushed finishing. It's a bit of a collection of contradictions. 70s Seiko dress watches, they were a contradiction. Oh, man. Um, I find it very compelling. Even better is that the fact is the Lumis Perfect dial is unblemished. Case retains its a wonderful original finishing, and the movement's held up well for its age. Thank, as always, thank you for the wonderful videos, and I apologize uh, for always for writing novel-length comments for poor Sabrina to read. Ha, I read it this time. Seiko's stuff was really wacky in the 70s. They they tended to be really out there. Um, you know, just talking about 70s design, this 
this jumbo is one of the most restrained designs that they had at the time. Everything else is pretty nuts. Um, their sort of classic grammar of design kind of went out the window in those days and everything was bright and crazy. And I mean, they're certainly well made. The quality of that time is unbeatable, but they're, they're a little wacky. Um, I always find though that that era of watch is best on their original bracelets. So if you don't have the original bracelet, something to look for, because Seiko designed them as the whole piece, not just the watch head, but the bracelet itself. Dan Era. Hi, I bought a 6309 in 2009. I believe it was a rework. Um, pretty sure the bezel insert is wrong because according to reference, it's supposed to be a Pepsi bezel. It has a black one. The SUA symbol is not clear, so fake dial as well. But what about hands, movement, case, crystal, and strap? I'm not even sure how much a watch like that cost nowadays. Um, if you're asking, if you have a rework, it, it, those typically are at best a source of parts. Uh, it's nothing I would invest any money in. I mean, if you enjoy the watch, wear it. Wear it to death. Um, but I wouldn't put any money into it. As for telling if the hands are fake or something, <clears throat> I can tell you, I have a couple videos talking about how to spot a fake 6309. And so that's something to look for. Um, there's, there's tells, there's the way the loom looks, the way the printing on the dial looks, the, the flatness of the hand surface, the way the hand loom looks. They're, they're, they're just ways to me, to my eyes, I can see pretty quickly. Um, you find that video and let me know. Um, Walter Alvarado, uh, one day ago, Spencer, did you reloom the 6105 dial and hands or just the hands? This is a re, this is a restoration I finished earlier this week. Uh, just, he sent me uh, an original dial. All I did was the hands, uh, but I'm very pleased with how they came out. Okay, and this Paul Steele is the last comment. It is? It is. You threw it? You mm -hmm. did that really long one? Mm-hmm. Wow. And he apologized for making you read it. <laughs> well, you know, I was summoned to make a peanut butter and jelly on graham cracker. Uh-oh. Sadie's home. I gotta go tell her. Wait, no, no. Hey, Sadie. 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 Sadie, come here. Does she not listen to me? She doesn't listen to Sadie. me. Sadie. Sadie. <laughs> Sadie. Sadie! Sadie! What? Everybody's going to think you're insane. Screaming and screaming. And Can screaming. you tell the nice people to smash that like button? Yeah. Ignore my music. One second. Ah, everything is going down. Why don't you just be yourself? Because music isn't good. You can hear the music and copyright. Oh, no. Oh, very I smart. You're so smart. You have to be between okay. mommy and me. Okay. Don't knock the whole thing over. I won't. Smash that like button because that's epic. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from the source. Okay. Last question. Last one. From Paul Steele. Best of luck with your project. Um, you will already know the spares for the... Oh, this is an MGB question, by the way. MGBs are readily available and cheapish. The bones of these cars are simple, but I would like to advise you if you have something that needs attention when you've gone deep into the car's build, do it while you can. Odds on it will fail if not done. The floor really should be done properly as I had a mini with similar holes and patches um, and patched it with marine grade stainless steel mesh and two pack epoxy. I was thinking about doing that. All at the five finger discount, but when all was put back and carpeted, whilst no leaks and uh, structurally better than original gives a feeling of dissatisfaction. Do it once and do it right. Anyway, more's the point where will you mount a Seiko dash clock on the car? I mentioned this because last time I visited my brother in the UK on his 1925 three. 4.5. I don't know how to read car things. His, uh, his 1925 th three stroke 4.5 Bentley. He had to remove the original Bregu uh, Breguet clock because it kept on breaking and was hugely expensive to repair and put in its place a 1970s clock from a Russian nuclear bomber. 
the Braju is safe inside a lined drawer in his shed. Yeah, you know, I'd actually already thought of that, and I did reply to this. I have, um... Oh no, he's leaving again. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what to talk about. I'm boring. Well, it's pizza night. Yeah. Yes, I have considered doing that. Like I said in my comment to you, this is a... This is a dash chronograph from a World War II German plane, but I was thinking, I this isn't, a, it's fine the way that it is, but there are some really cool dash clocks from World War II British planes, like the Spitfire ones are really cool, uh, but they're pricey. Uh, but there's a lot of World War II clocks, and if, you know, if I was going to go and do that, yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to have a dash clock in there. Uh, because the, they didn't have a clock in this one. Later on, the next models, they did. But that's what I'd like to do. I think that'd be, I think that'd be pretty neat. I the wasn't MG. listening. It's not a surprise. <laughs> anyway, so yes, that is, that's what's going on with that. Sit. Okay. That's it. Yes. It's Friday. Yep. You didn't say it. I didn't? You always say it's Friday. It's pizza day. I already said something about pizza. I thought I always said, dread it, run from it. It arrives nonetheless. Sometimes it's Friday. Say, sometimes you say that. It's pizza night Friday, so we're done. Yeah, I have to go make pizza dough and yeah. sauce. Yep, and then I have to make pizza. Yes. That's it. Thank you so much, folks, for looking through this 59 minutes, 55 seconds. Ooh, let's see. And we are at... An hour. An hour. <laughs> okay, folks, that's it. We're, we're done. We're gone. And thank you so much for the questions, and we do enjoy reading them. And happy Valentine's Day. And I hope that you have, have a great one. Okay, bye. bye. I want to ask the 8,000 people. I don't know, however many there are. 8,000, we'll just say that. What is your opinion on Apex? Because I know some of you probably do play Apex because it's a great game. Well, they might play Titanfall, the older version. They the older stuff. might. Titanfall is also really good. Titanfall 1 or Titanfall 2. So if any of you play Apex or Titanfall, Comment and Sadie will read your. Sadie will will be embiggened in terms of her knowledge. I don't know that word, but okay. Okay. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye.